In the first video I showed you how to make a simple web page. In this video I will show you the various HTML tags and what they do. So we open up Notepad. And we will add in our global structure tags, which are simply. The opening and closing HTML tags. The opening and closing head tags. We can also put in our page title. And of course we put in our body tags. These tags provide the necessary outline structure of a web page, and will be required in order to demonstrate any other tags I decide to show you. So let's start with the various things you can do with text. So we focus in between the two body tags, and we will make a paragraph. We do this by adding in the opening and closing tags with the letter P in them, and between them we will type some text, and then we'll save it and open it up in the browser. And we can see that it looks like this. Now this is just plain ordinary text. We can manipulate it in various ways. We can make it bold or italicized, which I will show you how to do, but let's put in more text on the next line. We do this by putting in a page break tag. This tag has the letters B and R in it, and it tells the browser to display the next block of text on the next line. So let's make the next block of text bold. To make text display in bold print, we use the strong emphasis tag. This is an opening and closing tag with the word strong in it. We put our bold text in between these two tags, save it. And when we open it up in the browser, we see that our second block of text appears on the next line and is bold. So let's make another line of text, and we'll do it in italics. This is done by placing text between an opening and closing tag with the letter I in them. And when we open it up in the browser, we can see that it looks like this, with the next line of text italicized. Then we'll put in another page break tag and underline the next block of text. The way to underline some text is to put it between an opening and closing tag with the letter U in them. When we save it and open it in the browser, we can see that the next block of text is underlined. Pretty cool isn't it? So we'll put in another page break, and add in another line of text with some subscript. The subscript tags, which are the tags with the letters S, U and B in them, tell the text in between them to display slightly smaller and lower in the browser. Like this. Now I will show you how to make an HTML comment that won't show up in the browser. These comment tags are used so that webmasters can make notes to themselves such as outlining sections. So we will set up a new page in Notepad. And we will focus in between the two body tags. And we will add in a strange little tag that starts with an opening bracket, then an exclamation point followed by two dashes. The tag then ends with two dashes and a closing bracket. We can type as much text as we want between them, then when we save it and open it up in the browser, we can see that the text doesn't show up. Comment tags can be very full, for things like outlining the sections of a page. Now let's talk about linking. A link, otherwise known as a hyperlink, is a block of text or a graphic that you can click on to be taken to another web page. If we go to www.google.com, for example, we can see that the page has a bunch of links. We can also see that the links appear underlined and in the color blue. First, I'll remind you of how to make a simple link to my favorite website. So we focus in between the body tags again, and add in our anchor tags, like so. The anchor tag tells the browser to anchor a command around a block of text. To tell it we want it to link to another web page, we put in the href element followed by the equals sign and two quotes. We then put in the URL to my favorite website, including the http colon slash slash www.voodoohoodoo.com, in between the quotation marks, and we add the block of text that we want the link anchored around between the opening and closing anchor tags, then save it. Then when we open it up in our browser, we can see that our link shows up in blue and is underlined. When we click on it, we are taken to my favorite website. You should also notice that Voodoo Hoodoo opens up in the same browser window, which is okay, but it takes you away from our own web page. Sometimes it might be better to have the new page open in a new window. This will keep our own page open in the background. First we'll add in a couple of page break tags to add give our new link a little space. Then we'll put in another set of anchor tags with the href element. Then to make it open in a new window, we add in a new element to our anchor tag called the target element. This includes the word target followed by the equals sign and two more quotes. Then in between the two quotes we put in an underscore and the word blank. We'll use another of my favorite websites to demonstrate, and don't forget the http colon slash slash www.sovereignandfree.com, and of course the text we want the link anchored around, and save it. Then when we open it up in our browser, we see our link shows up a few lines down. We click on it. We see that it opens up in a new window. Now I'll show you how to use an image as a hyperlink. So we add in a couple more page break tags. We then add in our anchor href tags. For this demonstration we'll use www.specialtysites24-7.com. Then to add in the image, we just use an image source tag with the name of the picture file between the quotes. I'll use a picture that is stored in the same folder as our web page file. Save it. And when we open it up in our browser, we see our image shows up. When we click on that, we are taken to specialtysites24-7.com. Now you should see that HTML is really easy to learn. You just have to practice playing around with some of the tags. If for example you want to center something all you do is 
Put it between opening and closing center tags. If you want your text to appear in big huge letters, simply put it between a pair of header tags with the numbers 1 through 6 in them. If you want a line going through it, put it in between an opening and closing tag with the word strike in it. If you want to put a border around it, put it into a single cell table with the border attribute set to whatever thickness you want. Actually we can do lots of things with tables. In fact, many web pages are completely structured within a single table. So let's take a closer look at them and we'll make a simple page template with a header, sidebar, footer and a main page body. So we'll start with a pair of table tags. And we'll tell the browser that we want the table to take up 100% of the page by adding in the width element, and if we want a border, we simply add in the border element, and for the fun of it, we'll set it at a thickness of 3 pixels. Then to add in our header section to this table, we will add in our first row with a set of table row tags. Then we'll make our table cell with the coal span equals to attribute so that it will take up the entire width of the table. Then we'll put in a little header text and center it. The next row will have two cells, we will set the width of each cell to 20 and 80% respectively. Then we'll add in our footer, repeating the tags that we used for the header. Save it. And when we open it up in our browser, we can see that it looks like this. By now you should have a basic understanding of how HTML works. So let's talk a little bit about page content. There are lots of places on the web where you can get page content. There are article directories, such as azinearticles.com, where there are tons of articles for you to use on your website. You can also get video content from places like YouTube, for example you could do a search for how to make a web page, and you'll find a really cool video starring me. YouTube even provides you with the codes to paste into your web page so that visitors can watch the video from within your web page. All you do is copy them and paste them into your own HTML code. There are also tons of remotely hosted scripts from places such as BraveNet.com, they will also provide you with the codes for you to build a guest book, or a form, or an email list, etc. There are tons of websites out there that will help you to fill your pages with content. Everything from graphics and news feeds to chat rooms to almost anything you can think of. It's easy. All it takes is a little practice, a little creativity and a little work. Thank you and goodbye.